Crackers of Prickly Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Ellen Reed as the squalor. As you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is giving daily enjoyment to millions of people all over America. In offices and factories, on farms and ranches, in mines and oil fields, folks find that chewing Wrigley Spearmint helps them feel better and work better. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Gum are glad that their product is proving helpful and enjoyable to so many people, and they're glad, too, that they're able to bring you Life with Luigi, because they know it's the kind of a radio program that millions of Americans enjoy. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, do you want to know how I'm spending my day here in America? Well, first, uh, my alarm clock is waking me up at 6 o'clock every morning. <laughs> then, uh, like every other American, I'm going to get up. Set it for 8 o'clock and I go back to sleep. <laughs> And then after eight, uh, I'm going to take a shower, eat the breakfast, read the headlines in the paper, and I worry all the morning. <laughs> but the while I'm worrying, I'm waiting for the customers to come into my antique shop. But that's, that's not to giving me so much to do. So I'm going to sit down and read this, some library book. This week, I'm going to take out The Life of a Lincoln, which I'm reading for the 16th time. Come on, Mommy, I think I'm going to spend more time with Mr. Lincoln than Mrs. Lincoln today. <laughs> So when, I, when I'm not reading and when there's no customer in the store, I'm going to sit and listen to the radio. And lately, I'm going to get a big pleasure from what's called the uh, uh, Dixieland Jazz Music. Come on, Mommy, you never heard the music like this. You never heard the music like this. Trumpet is a scream, a clarinet is a cry, saxophone is a go crazy, drummer is a jump all around. <laughs> you don't know if you should dance or call the police. <laughs> And then, then before I'm going to my night school, I'm always stopping to my countryman Pasquale's spaghetti palace. But tonight, I'm going to want the Pasquale to bother me, so I'm sure to marry his fat daughter. So I'm going to eat near my school. I know Pasquale, he's, he's not going to like this, so I'm going to start to sneak out very slow. Luigi, my friend! <laughs> Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Hey, where you going, a little pumpkin ahead? <laughs> Not to my restaurant? Hey, how you gonna tell, Pasquale? Huh? I just take a one look at your banana nose. It's not a pointer to my place. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, tonight, Pasquale, I'm afraid to uh, like eating just a little bite in a restaurant near my school. What? Look, Luigi, I brought you here all the way from Italy, 12,000 miles. I watch over you like a baby, and if you're going to ruin your stomach with a bad food, it's going to be in my restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pasquale, thank you, but, but, but I'm not got too much time. Not got time. You always, you remind me of a little squirrel, always running around here, there, and everywhere, looking for junk to eat, when right in my restaurant, you got the best of the town. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're so right, Pasquale. Nobody's a server better junk than you. <laughs> That's a funny thing. When I say it, it's a come out of different. <laughs> oh, come on, Luigi. Forget this of foolishness. Come into my place. You're going to get your favorite bowl of minestrone, some pizza, spaghetti, and meatballs, a ravioli on the side, a little chicken, a cacciatore, and some granola and a coffee. Then you're going to go to school. Pasquale, if I made all of that, then somebody's got to carry me to the school. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go ahead. See how you like to eat at a stranger place. You think that a restaurant is going to give you all the attention I give you? You think the waiter's going to fold your napkin in your lap, butter up your bread for you, and personally blow on your soup until it's getting nice and cold? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Pasquale, just, just for the one night, then I promise you... All right, you go, go. I'm going to stop and you eat out. Only one thing... If you get a toe man of poison, and don't come crying to me because you got to lose your toes. <laughs> Hi, 
Are you finished with your soup, sir? I'm a just a taster it. Uh, don't you care for minestrone? Sure, but uh, what the soup is this? Uh, shall I get you a different plate? Why, there's nothing wrong with a plate. It's the soup that's so terrible. Oh, <laughs> I suppose you're an expert. No, I'm no expert, but I'm not what the minestrone is supposed to taste like. And what does our minestrone taste like? Well, your minestrone doesn't it taste like a minute, doesn't it taste like a strong? <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like, like, well, it tastes like a hot water that's the smell of the chicken. <laughs> well, please, please, I'm, I'm not like to complain, but I'm not. I'll bring you something else. We have a vegetable soup, a Yankee bean soup, and a chicken soup. What would you like? I would like a minestrone, but you know that. <laughs> Sir, that is minestrone. Read your menu. Please, I'm going to fool my eyes, but my stomach is too smart. <laughs> Now look, uh, look. Maybe, maybe you can tell me how you was a mad minister on, and I'm going to tell you where you was a mad mistake. I don't make the soup; the chef does that. How oh, the chef? Is Italian, French, Greek, or It so happens the chef was born in Minnesota. Aha, uh -huh, that's the trouble. Minnesota is not the minister. On. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Mister, maybe if I was to go in and, and I tell him how how my mum is a maker the minister on. Look. Sir, I've got other tables to wait on. You come in for one plate of soup, and while I offer you something else, you won't take it, so here's your check. Pay the cashier. All right. That's quite I was right. I'm sure to stay where I'm a belong. Hmm, it's a 36 cents for the soup. Even the price of water has gone up. And <laughs> hey, what's the right thing on the back of the check? If for any reason you are dissatisfied, Pink, pink Liz would appreciate the you complaint. Oh, well, at this time I'm going to do. Hey, 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 wait there. Yes, what is it now? Please, please, I'm like a pencil. Mr. Pink Liz, I want I'm sure to make my complaint. You're going to complain about me? Oh, no, no, no. It's up to you to change it yourself. I'm just going to try to change the minister. <laughs> All right, here's a pencil. All right, thank you. Now, I've got a few minutes before my night school classes start, so I'm going to write. Dear Mr. Pink Liz, you got fine restaurant, good the location, but a bad the minister on the soup. Tomorrow when you make the soup, do like my mom. Take some water, boil up with a good beef, especially fine mother bun. Signed your name and address on the bottom of the check, too? Sure, but how about you, you think I'm a dirty something wrong because no. the waiter he's not like me? Well, uh. he, he probably never heard from anyone in the restaurant before. Uh, usually people, they just forget about those things. Especially about soup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, in my delegate desk, nobody complains about the food. <laughs> no? <laughs> Why don't they complain, shirts? Because in an emergency, one of my three pounds alarm is Makes a wonderful baseball bat. My <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'm only joking. Yeah, but, uh, but uh, friends, uh, serious, uh, you think I'm a bit wrong to complain about the minestrone? Of course not, Luigi. They asked for suggestions, <laughs> so you gave it to them. Yo, ho, you, you are perfectly justified in your judgment. Shh, quiet here. Here comes Miss Baldy. Oh, oh, oh. oh, good evening, class. Good evening, Miss Baldy. I'm good evening. I'm sorry, I'm late, class. I can see we're all here, so we'll dispense with the roll call. Oh. I believe I asked you to review some famous sayings in our American history. Is that right? Well, is that right? That is most certainly right. Squealer. <laughs> oh, come now. We haven't even started. Mr. Howard, who said, it is not best to swap horses while crossing the river? Mm. It is not best to swap horses while crossing the river. Paul Revere? Uh, no. General Grant? No. Teddy Roosevelt? No. Well, I... Paul, that you better ride that horse in yourself before he drowns. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz, no speaking out of turn. Uh, Miss Balding, I can give you the correct answer in a yes. Yes, please. I know. Mr. Schultz, who said that famous phrase? The witch, the one that Abraham Lincoln said? <laughs> yes, do you know the answer? Or... <laughs> Good heavens. Oh, do I love to get the teacher for shimmer. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Mr. Schultz. Abraham Lincoln is correct. Now, uh, Mr. Basco, our next famous saying, who said, a chicken in every pot? A chicken in every pot? Yes, who is known for that? Pinkley's a restaurant. <laughs> 
I never knew they said a chicken in every pot. That's because you never tried the minestrone. <laughs> Him and Luigi's got the country in the soup. Quiet, Mr. Schultz. Mr. Bosco, what on earth are you talking about? Miss Spaulding, he's talking about a restaurant that he ate in tonight. Well, I'm talking about a famous saying, a chicken in every pot. Well, Mr. Basco? Well, I'm... I'm Miss Spaulding, I, I'm going to swear to there, there's something that smells like a chicken in a pot. <laughs> For the last time, Mr. Basco, who said it? I am said it. I'm ordered the minestrone, but, but it was a chicken Mr. Basco, you're not sufficiently prepared for today's lesson. You may leave the class. I may leave... But, but Miss Spaulding, I'm... Leave the class. All right. Himmel, from a plate of soup, look how a fella gets himself into hot water. <laughs> Hello, Pasquale. Luigi, you home early. Oh, oh, don't tell me that food you ate is already making you sick. No, the worst thing that is it got me in trouble with Miss Spaulding and, and, and she's sending me home. Serves you right. What happened? Did you ask your teacher for some bike grabbing the soda? <laughs> no, I was... I was just talking about a minestrone soup. I'm, I'm ahead at the Pinkley's restaurant. Uh, see, next time you're going to blame me. What did the minestrone soup taste like? I don't know. Like a chicken soup. Oh, they improved it. Last time it tasted like a clam chowder. <laughs> <laughs> well, Luigi, at least the you suffering is a thought you to stay away from those big restaurants. They don't care about the custom, only about the buck. Yeah, but isn't that true, Pasquale? And I'm not going to get thrown out of my class for nothing. I'm going to prove you that the rest of is going to take my recipe. Uh, my recipe. Uh, you're going to prove. The only thing that's going to happen to your recipe is that the waiter tells the manager, manager tells the cook, then wherever you go in, you're going to get a fly in your soup. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Trouble with you, Luigi, you believe everybody in anything. you what they call a guzzable. <laughs> Well, all right, Pasquale, maybe I'm a gazebo, but, but you see, I'm going to go back to that restaurant, and that the minestrone is going to taste just like my mom. All right, I tell you what, I go with you. And if it does taste like that, I'm going to give you free dinners in my place as long as you live. As long as I live? Yes, and to show you how sure I am, I make a better off. What's that? Free dinners as long as you live and three months after that. <laughs> Before we return to life with Luigi, here's a suggestion that'll add enjoyment to your daily activities. Whether you're home, at work, shopping, or driving your car, chew a stick of delicious Wrigley Spearmint gum from time to time. When you're chewing on a good, smooth piece of gum, you just naturally feel better because chewing helps relieve pent-up tension and gives you comfort and satisfaction. Besides, Wrigley Spearmint gum has a lively, long-lasting flavor that tastes mighty good and freshens your mouth. So keep a package of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy wherever you go. See how chewing this delicious gum can make every day more enjoyable for you. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, Mamma Mia, tonight the Mina Pasquale, we're going to eat the minestrone in a Pinkley's restaurant. And we're going to see if uh, Mr. Pinkley is uh, decided to use your recipe for the soup. Uh, Pasquale was offered to have Ross uh, come along and, and a sample of some of the soup. But I'm going to say no, because Ross, uh, to her, anything is a taste of good. <laughs> so, Mr. Pasquale, we went, and you can imagine how nervous I felt later when the soup was brought in by the waiter. There you are. Oh, well, uh, thank you. Wait, uh, let me try it first, uh, Luigi. I got a stronger stomach here than you. No, 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 no. We, 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 we brought the taste together, Pasquale, huh? All right. All right. One, two, three. Well, Luigi, what do you say? Well, stubborn. What do you expect to find there? Oil? <laughs> now, tell the truth. Did they follow your recipe? No. No, Pasquale. Is it still a chicken? I can't understand this. Maybe the cook can't read English. Maybe you should have called up your mama, fly her down the weekends and help out a pinkly in the kitchen, eh? 
Yes, and I, I was to take them seriously, and, and I'm going to give them my complaints. Hey, waiter. What is it? Waiter, I was to give her a sip of Minestrone soup a few days ago, nothing is happening. I thought you looked familiar. Oh, Mr. Hamilton, I'll let you talk to the manager. Oh, I'm washing my hands of this whole mess. Do you what? I said I'm washing my hands of this whole mess. All right, the user of this soup, and here's an applicant to wipe for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what is it? Are you Mr. Mr. Hamilton? Oh, well, please, Mr. Hamilton, you make a finer watch, but you've got to change your minestrone soup. Come on, let's matter sip it here, and what's to happen? Well, we don't act on customer suggestions. I sent you a slip down to Tinkley's Public Relations Department. Tinkley's Relations? You mean his family, they got to take the stage for the super first? <laughs> hey, Luigi, will you stop knocking your brains out? This fella don't care what he serves you, as long as you die outside of the premises. <laughs> I don't want to start any arguments. If you want to, here's the address. You go down to public relations and straighten it out with them or anybody else in the company. Nothing to do with it, Luigi. If you're going to do all of that to make a put you on a salary first. No, no, Pasquale, I'm going to do Maybe they don't know what's going on. But this time, I'm not going to bring a suggestion. No, what are you going to bring? Uh, Mr. Manager, uh, give, me a, give me one of those fresh plates of soup, huh? I'm going to bring them with that. Yes, sir? Whom do you wish to see? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Young Lady. This is uh, public relations for Pinkley's restaurant? Uh? Yes, we handle their advertising. Oh, is that Mr. Fuller's lunch you've got there? Well, if he's a hungry, I'm going to let him eat it, but he's not going to like it. What? This is a minestrone soup from your restaurant that I'm roast about a few days ago. But I don't understand. Who is that soup for? Is it for nobody? I'm sent in my mama's recipe to Mr. Pinkley. Later says he's a wash his hands in this mess. The manager, he's too busy to handle. So I bring this soup here and his relations, and they're going to test it themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I dare say this is most unusual. That's what everybody's to say. The people on the bus, the men down the stairs, the elevator man. You think, you think I'm like to go down the city with a plate of soup in my hands? <laughs> Must be rather difficult. Yeah, especially when, when I'm going to keep my hat on it so the soup should stay warm. <laughs> now, please, are you let me... Johnson, I'm going down to Pinkers with some new slogans. If anybody... Are you carrying a plate of soup? <laughs> yeah. Uh, just to look, I'm... Oh, oh I'm sorry. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Young Lady. I'm going to spill a little bit under your desk. Yes. Mr. Fuller, this gentleman is a patron of Pinkley. Well, a representative of the public. Come in, sir. Come in, come in, come in. You know, we should be in contact with you people more often. Say, listen to this slogan. Tell me what you think. At Pinkley's, your dollar stretches farther. So does the soup. <laughs> huh? Well, uh, what about this one? Dine out tonight at Pinkley's, where the food tastes really different. Especially the minestrone, it tastes like a chicken. Hey, what are you, a wise guy? No, no, but, I, but I'm not like to made, be made fuller. I'm a Luigi Basco, fellow who's a sender you're a sipper for. Oh, say, I got that suggestion from our Olive Street store yesterday. It's very interesting, but... Well, good heavens, you didn't bring a plate of soup here. Well, it's, uh, it's not a full plate. I'm a spill the some on the bus. A little bit is a fall out when I'm a trip on the street. Some is a soaked up in my hat, too. <laughs> And you're going to find a few spoons under your secretary outside. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just what do you want, Mr. Basco? Taste the soup. <laughs> you're joking. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> go on, go ahead. Take it just to one goose. One goose? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mouthful. Maybe you're smaller, eat the mouthful is a two goods, is it? <laughs> but there's no point in my tasting it. Pinkley's is a large chain organization and we cater to all kinds of appetites, you understand? Now look, just to give you an idea, over a hundred thousand people walk in and out of our doors every week. You may tell me that hundred thousand of people is a walk in and out of your store every week, huh? Yes, sir, that's right. Well, maybe if you was to serve a better minestrone, they would stay inside. <laughs> Basco, there's no sense our wasting each other's time. Pinkleys have been making their food the same way for many, many years. Trouble is that they've been making it, but they've not been tasting it. Now, if you, if you only taste it, it's a No, I'm sorry, Mr. Basco, it's no use. If you wish, I'll call Mr. Pinkley himself at the tower building, tell him that you were... No, 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 I'm, I'm going to tell him myself. I want the history to tell just a minute. Come back. No, no, Mr. Pinkley, the soup is going to get the cold.
Please, Mr. Sonny, Mr. Pinkley, is there sooner going to be no more soup left in the place? Every time I'm a mover, somebody's a spill. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. But Mr. Pinkley says we'll just have to wait. Meanwhile, maybe you'd better tell me the ingredients of your recipe. Oh, you mean... You mean it's thrown like my mama used to make it? All right, sir. First, you take good fish to beef. And you make up with the soup, huh? Mm -hmm. Then you put in the salad, the carrots, the potatoes, the cabbage. Yes. And then uh, let it cook. See? Uh -huh. Then you simmer down with some lard. And when the vegetable is finished, you boil it in the soup. You throw in the pasta. Uh, the pasta. How do you spell that? Here. Yeah. I don't know. Just to give me ten cents, I'm going to buy you a salmon. <laughs> And then you put, you put a little salt, the pepper, maybe a little parsley, garlic, and kind of dance your minestrone. Fine. Well, I have it all. Good. Now you're going to change your recipe? No. Mamma mia, I'm just a matter of all the soup for nothing. I'm, uh, I'm bringing this in to Mr. Pinkley. Oh, well, uh, then, then, then maybe you're going to take this minestrone inside and, and a feed him with just uh, one little spoon of food. Oh, well, just the basin. All right. Louis. Uh, oh, oh Alice. I've been looking all over uh -huh. for you. I've been looking at one office and another, inside and out. Uh -huh. And Mr. Fuller said that maybe you're going to be here. What's the matter for you? You getting super happy? Come on home before you go crazy. You know something, Louis? They got a saying in America here is a warn about this. What the saying? I'm a soup to nuts. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, nah, come on. Be a good fella. Come on home. No, but Pasquale... Now, I'm... don't bother Pasquale. Just to listen. Next time you go in a restaurant, I'll tell you what you do. Order some French is a bay to see. Huh? And if you don't like it, tell them to whistle for their money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, Pasquale, I, I think you're right. Nobody cares. I'm going through all this trouble. Come on. I'm even going to make them mad than a miss for nothing. Well, it's all a worry yourself. Everything's going to be all right. Come on, come on. Thank you, Mr. Sinclair. Thank you very much. Mr. Basto, where are you going? Home. Oh, nonsense, 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 my good man. Come in, come in. I want to talk to you. Don't go, Luigi's are trying to trap you into a game of canazza. <laughs> <laughs> Now listen to Mr. Pinkley, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to waste your time. If you think you, well, if, if you think your minestrone is a good, I'd be your privilege. Goodbye. Well, but Mr. Pasco, I am sick. Mr. Fuller called me after you left his office. Now, I've, I've gone to the trouble of setting up a portable gas range in my office, and I've already sent for the ingredients. The, the ingredients? Yes, the ingredients, you know, the, 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 the carrots, the peas, the pastas, everything else. <laughs> you know, no, nothing to do you, Louis. Don't even know what a gradient is. No. Uh, please, uh, Mr. Bassett, would you do me the honor of preparing a minestrone soup for me? A soup like your mother used to make? I, I like to my mom used to make. Wait for Louis to come home. He's just trying to get a free meal. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Mr. Bassett? Well, Mr. Pinkley, you wait. In a little while, you're going to be shaking the hands with my mom as a minestrone. Well, how did Mr. Pinkley? Ah, uh, Mr. Bassett, this is a gourmet delight. An Epicurean treat for the most sensitive palate. Huh? Uh, Mr. Pinkley, if you don't like it, the soup, just say it in a plain of words. <laughs> but Mr. Basco, I love the soup. You, you love it? Oh, oh, that's good. I'm so happy you like it, Mr. Pinkley. Oh, well, Pasquale, look, all of my work was a nuts for nuts, you know. Oh, you're right, Mr. Basco. You see, gentlemen, I started Pinkley's years ago. Years ago, huh? Just a small beanery. Until now, that little business has grown to 50 stores. 50 stores. What do you think? That's a big business. Oh, yes. Good thing. And from now on, from now on, Mr. Basco, your soup will be served in every one of them. I'm glad when someone like you helps me get back on the track. <laughs> you don't forget, I helped you get on that trolley, too. <laughs> oh, my father, how you can talk like that? Easy, I just open my mouth and push with the teeth. <laughs> Luigi, I'm going to tell you something, and I was going to open up your eyes. Open your ears, too, and listen. You've been yapping so much about this minestrone like your mama's a maker. I'm going to tell you something. 
for three years that you've been eating of my soup. What you just made is what you've been getting out of my spaghetti powder. Oh, Pastor, you, you're crazy. I'm crazy, huh? Sure. <laughs> you think so, huh? Yeah. All right, I'll tell you what, I'll taste the soup again. All right, right. I'm going to take it. You'll see. Mm. Mm. <laughs> this is so wonderful. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> I bet I know where you're going to eat it from now on. <laughs> I bet I know too. Where? Hinkley. Pretty soon you're going to get a big surprise. You're going to get a beautiful present from Mr. Pinkley for your recipe. Yeah. And talking about so much about the minestrone soup makes me remember another kind of soup you used to make back home in Italy. I remember, Mamma Mia, he used to put a great a big pot on the kitchen stove, put in a little piece of fine salt pork, rich fresh vegetable, good juicy meat, a little bit of bacon, then add the water. And pretty soon you have a wonderful soup out of that big pot. And that reminds, it reminds me of us here in Chicago. Because Chicago is, is like all the big cities in America. And all these places is sometimes called melting a pot. That's mean, that's mean they put the French, Jews, Italian, Swedes, Greeks, all kinds of people together. And then, then they add a little friendship, some kindness, and some, some human understanding. That's the melting pot over here, Mamma Mia. That's America. Dear loving son, Luigi Pasco, Lilla Migrette. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they'd like to remind you that when you want a between-meal treat, Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is just about the perfect answer. A stick of Wrigley's Spearmint is chock full of lively, delicious, real spearmint flavor. Without being rich or spoiling your appetite, it satisfies you and helps tide you over till mealtime. So, for a tasty treat between your meals, and one that's not only good, but also good for you, chew healthful, refreshing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Get a few packages of Wrigley's Spearmint next time you go to the store. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Norman MacDonald. Mac Benoff writes the script with Lou Dermott. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reeves as Quarry, Aunt Conroy as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Shipp as Miss Spalding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. Music is under the direction of Rod Gluster. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.